Yes, thank you. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. This is our first episode. <laughs> you guys ready? Everyone ready? <laughs> okay, all right. All right, welcome to the first episode of the Atomic Comic Pile. It's the show where a nuclear medicine technologist, that's me, reads the comics no one else does. <laughs> Everyone's in the house tonight, okay? How's it going, Steve? Mike? Giuseppe? Always a pleasure. <laughs> so, let's get started, okay? First up, Neat Stuff. You know I'd have to start with this comic. It's Neat Stuff, right? Neat Stuff? What kind of a name for a comic is that? We're starting the entire series off with Neat Stuff? Someone get my agent on the phone. Come on, Steve. It's the first episode. Lighten up. <laughs> Kevin, guess what? <laughs> what? That's what. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of those independent hippie type comics. I didn't, uh, I didn't know what it was when I got it. I just liked the name. The whole thing is written and drawn by a guy named Peter Bag. It's about this character, Buddy Bradley, a high school kid, pretty much a real jerk, but it's funny. A high school jerk? So you can relate to him? Not necessarily. I do like this, though. It's got a Kevin in it. This is issue nine. Nine, 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 nine! It's a 15 issue run. It's all been collected together in two volume, the two volume hardcover set. The words just roll off the tongue. Yes, sometimes I get tongue tied, okay? <laughs> Mike, help me out. Thanks, Mike. Mike, that, uh, how's your toe feeling? Hey, this is fun. I'm having a good time. There's my pal. You can always count on Giuseppe. E buongiorno. Interestingly enough, this character, Buddy Bradley, was created in 1981 and became a cultural slackerdom icon for Generation X, my generation, in the Seattle underground grunge movement of the early 90s. He was even in a Greek cell phone commercial in 2006. Ah, the Greek Isles. Such a beautiful place. I remember the phone commercials well. Oh, the Greek are known for their phone commercials. All right, enough about this. Okay, so that one wasn't the greatest, right? Okay, but how about this? The new funny book. Check out that cover. That's why I bought this. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, that back cover! Another hippie book! Yes. Okay. Evil Weed. Evil Weed. Yes, another hippie book, I guess. But the cup, the front cover, look at this. <laughs> this cover art by Filipino artist Nestor Redondo is like the coolest thing ever. Come on now. You gotta admit that. Yeah, well, okay. See? That is cool. I'll give you that. Okay, so this is issue number three. There were only three issues, and each issue was like a reboot to the series, and it ended with this one. Basically, they're all put out by a guy named Larry Fuller. Larry Fuller was the man that uh, had quite a few firsts in the comic industry. He, was, he had put out the first comic book completely written and drawn by a black man. He put out the first comic book starring a black superhero, and he put out the first all-gay comic. And what this comic is, is a collection of couple-page stories from many different artists and writers that he bought and collected together just to put out and commission this extremely awesome cover that has absolutely nothing to do with the inside. You know what they say about judging a book by its something or other? Okay, okay, but let's take a look inside, all right? So the first story, it's got really cool artwork by this guy named R. Harp Tesseract. Harp Tesseract. Okay, that's the coolest name ever. The story? Not good. Kirk and Spock show up in the Enterprise as they crash into the edge of the universe. Then we get to Concho. It looks kind of cool. Okay, that's pretty funny. 
Okay, this uh, Rawhide Carson, this is really nicely drawn. The story, very boring though. And it's made by a guy named Ray Horn, who was Mike Fuller's co-publisher. And he only worked on comics with Mike Fuller. Well, they acquired 60 more pages of comics for future issues, but those never came out, and all of those pages were burned in a house fire in 1980. And Ray Horn died at the age of 50. Well, that's kind of a downer. You don't say! How about a good old-fashioned Marvel superhero comic? Now we're talking! You now we're talking! Generic comic book. Oh, no! Okay, so they misspell the word two, should be T-O-O, -O, no big deal, except, oddly enough, all the characters climbing onto the bus are staring at them. As far as the story goes, there's no reason for it. They're not doing anything. You know why this thing happens? It's called the Marvel Method. The writer or the editor will discuss a plot synopsis with the artist, and then the artist will draw the entire comic. There's no story to go from. They just make it up, and then they hand the art back to the writer, and the writer just fits in dialogue balloons. Uh, what are you doing? Well, the genetic comic was written by Steve Skeets, who went on to write about my brother, Peter Porker, the Amazing Spider-Ham. Oh, I didn't know that. Wait a minute, aren't you Italian? Steve Skeets? My name is Steve. And maybe you're related too. Okay, here we go. An ad for the Marvel tryout book. So this was in every comic when I was growing up, this advertisement for the Marvel tryout book book. One take, Kevin. You get the Marvel tryout book, you you draw the art from their story, you send it in, and if you win, you get a job at Marvel Comics drawing Spider-Man. Who knew the comic would be this big? Here it is, the Marvel tryout book. I got my copy signed by writer Jim Shooter, artist John Romita Jr., and the winner of the Marvel tryout book, Mark Bagley. Now I was only 10 years old when this came out, so I didn't try out myself. But I was 21 when Volume 2 came out, and I tried out for this one. There's my art. Page 1 of my art. I never sent it in. Why didn't I send it in? Well, there was no prize for winning this contest. You didn't get a job. In fact, Mark Bagley didn't get a job for winning the first contest. But that's a long story I can tell another time. Please don't. Here we go again. The rumor is this comic exists for one reason. It was so Marvel Comics could copyright the names Superhero and Supervillain by making them the names of these two characters. This character never appeared anywhere else again. Maybe I should draw him. Now we're talking! But for something a little more exotic, let's travel all the way around the world to Germany for Spuck Gescheichten. Ah! Oh, sorry. Okay, so this means haunted stories. I'm Bander Todespin und Witter Umgleich Gescheichten, which means under the spell of death and more scary stories. First of all, this cover is extremely cool. Whoa, okay, cool. Whoa, look at that guy! Man, the Germans know how to make a comic. Arsat, der Magier von Venedig, the magician from Venice. We need more comics set in Europe. Old timey Europe. Dynact der Verdemten, the Night of the Damned. Vorstab in die Fieberhole, foray into the fever. Das 
Geheimnis der Titanic. The Titanic's secret. If that's the Titanic secret, I want to be on board the Titanic. <laughs> and that's it for our first episode. I want to thank you for coming along, and I'll see you next time. Hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Okay, that's enough. Okay. Oh my god, that's enough.